जय गुरुदेव I hope you did your homework. I gave you just one page to read, page one eighty three. Have you all done it? Yeah. So let's move on to page one eighty four. It begins with a story about Udalaka. Yeah. Let's see what we get to learn from this new story by Vashishta. Vashishta. stand on concepts and percepts of the mind which are subtle and sharp the mind has been put together by time and it has gained great strength in course of time bring it under control by wisdom before time fills this creeper known as the body by devoutly contemplating my words you will attain supreme bliss i shall narrate to you Sage Udalaka attained the supreme vision of truth. In a corner of the earth, there is a great mountain known as Gandhamadana. On one of its peaks, there was a great tree. In that region, there lived the sage Udalaka. Even while he was a young boy, he aspired. through his own effort of course then he was of little understanding and he had a restless mind though he had a pure heart he engaged himself in austerities in the study of the scriptures and so on and wisdom arose in him while sitting alone one day the sage udalaka reflected thus what is liberation which is said to be the foremost among the objects to be attained upon attaining which one does not experience sorrow and is not born again when shall i rest permanently in that state when will the mental agitations caused by desires and cravings cease when will i be freed from thoughts like this i have done and this i should do when will my mind cease to undergo perversities to living in relationship here even as the lotus lying on water is not tainted by it when will i with the help of the boat of supreme wisdom cross to the other shore of liberation when will i be able to look upon the diverse activities of people with the playfulness of a child when will the mind attain utter quiescence when will the illusory division between the subjective and the objective experiences cease through the experience of the infinite consciousness when will i be able to behold this concept known as time without being involved in it when will i living in a cave with the mind in utter tranquility remain like a rock in a state in which there is no movement of thought at all thus reflecting uttalaka continued his practice of meditation but his mind continued to be agitated some days however this mind abandoned external objects and remained in a state of purity at other times it was greatly disturbed greatly distressed by such changing moods he roamed the forest one day he reached a lonely spot in the forest which had not been visited by anyone else there he saw a cave which appeared to be the most conducive to the attainment of the state of utter tranquility and peace it was delightful in every way with beautiful creepers and flowers around it with a moderate climate and it shone as if it had been carved out of an emerald So on this page, we start the story of Sage Udalaka. Aren't you in a similar state? Yeah, you've been doing knowledge for so long, and you've been really implementing it, applying it in life. And the same questions come to you, you know, when, when will my mind 
stop being so agitated when will it calm down yeah so the middle paragraph of the page where sage uddalaka is reflecting is just thinking talking to himself that is the most important let's look at that what is liberation which is said to be the foremost among the objects to be attained upon attaining which one does not experience sorrow and is not born again yeah basically the karma bag gets exhausted and one does not come into that cycle of birth and death and birth and death how can that liberation be achieved or attained when shall i rest permanently in that state when will the mental agitations caused by desires and craving cease yeah you also have these questions no there's so many desires and they keep bombarding me moment to moment to moment i have desires when will they cease when will this mind just shut up yeah when will that happen when will i be free from thoughts like this i have done and this i should do mind is caught in only two things oh i have done this and oh why did i do this or how did this happen or maybe i should have not done this yeah we have regret about it or we keep thinking about what we have done yeah wondering whether it was good or bad or should have been done in a different way but we keep thinking about this is what i have done and the second is this i should do future yeah mind is caught up oh i have to do this i have to go here i have to complete this this has to be done yeah mind is either in the past or in the future when will my mind cease to undergo perversities though living in relationship here even as the lotus lying on water is not tainted by it let's understand perversity a little more suppose i have a desire i want something to happen in a particular manner only yeah or i think this is the right way yes it should be like this only but you know few days pass and somehow things change circumstances change and the other person proves it to me that my way of thinking about this particular thing was not right yeah but my desire is what to be right oh i am right yes so i will behave unreasonably give all kinds of explanations how this thing is still right yeah unreasonable behavior because of hanging on to a desire is a perversity yeah so behaving unreasonably look at yourself yeah so many times you behave unreasonably Yeah, somebody says something to you, and just to prove yourself right, you will say, "No, this is like this only." I'm telling you, it is like this. Yeah, and you come up with all kinds of proofs. Yeah. So look into yourself. Homework number one: What perversity do I have? Yeah, or what? How many perversities do I have? Unreasonable behavior because of hanging on to a desire. or hanging on to an aversion oh i don't want this and because i don't want this i give 1000 explanations how that thing is bad yeah that thing might not be bad or that person might not be so bad but because of my aversion to him or her i am hell bent on proving that i am right yes unreasonable behavior because of holding on to a desire or an aversion is a perversity yeah 
you recognize homework number one you recognize what what perversities you have when will i with the help of the boat of supreme wisdom cross to the other shore of liberation when will i be able to look upon the diverse activities of people with the playfulness of a child yeah we need that maturity you know to not take life so seriously it's not the end of the world if i don't get this or i get that it's okay yeah to be able to live like a child it's okay what is is it does not take my playfulness and my happiness away so dalaka is asking himself when will i be able to do that when will the mind attain utter quiescence utter quiescence complete silence when will the illusory division between the subjective and the objective experiences cease yeah i and you subjective objective yeah when will that illusory division between i and you cease through through the experience of the infinite consciousness when will i be able to behold this concept known as time without being involved in it as in not getting lost in past and future yeah when will i be able to just be established in the now in the present moment and when will i living in a cave with a mind in utter tranquility remain like a rock in a state where there is no movement of thought at all this is so beautiful na when there are no thoughts no thoughts going like this like this or bothering you and going like this yeah yeah thoughts are all over the mind they keep bothering us right he wants to be completely free of all these thoughts complete silence yeah where there is no movement of thought yeah this is so beautiful no the way the alaga is speaking to himself yeah let's see what he has to say ahead yeah now remember where the story had stopped yeah he saw a beautiful cave now let's see what happens ahead
beautiful na so beautifully he is talking to his mind yeah and weakening the mind this is one technique that you can adopt start weakening your mind and how what strengthens your mind is feeding raga and dvesha and raga and dvesha are nothing but desires yeah i want is also a desire i don't want is also a desire yeah so all these desires and cravings that you have yeah they create concepts in your head yeah and the mind clings on to these concepts really tight that's how we feed the mind if you want to break the concepts the easiest way is to weaken the mind yeah and that is what udalaka is doing here and so beautifully let's revisit it so we go to the second paragraph directly O oh mind what have you to do with this world appearance wise men do not come into contact with what is called pleasure which turns into pain later on anyways yeah so what is he saying here every little pleasure comes with a tax and the tax is pain yeah it doesn't matter what that pleasure is whether it is a million dollar house yeah for 10 15 minutes you'll be happy yeah after that the pain will begin oh i have to maintain such a big house i have to clean this house i have to pay the property taxes i have to furnish the house and you know the pain begins yeah same thing with people initially you are very happy with a particular individual but slowly slowly the mind tends to become unhappy with the habits of the person or the behavior of that person the attitude of the person the same person you loved suddenly has become the source of your discomfort the source of your pain yeah same thing happens with situations you crave i want this i want this you keep running after name fame you achieve that name and fame then what happens when you are absolutely famous and popular you are actually hiding in your house because you don't want that kind of attention now you crave privacy yeah every pleasure comes with a tax and the tax is pain so that's what he's saying here wise men do not really run after such pleasures they recognize that every pleasure will be followed by pain he who abandons the supreme peace that lies within and goes in search of sense pleasure abandons a delightful garden and goes into a bush of poison herbs yeah people situations and things are just sense pleasures yeah they are of the five senses Yeah, I see a beautiful person. I want to be with that person. I see a beautiful thing. I want to possess that thing. Yeah, it's all sense pleasures. Yeah, I want to touch something. Yeah, the craving of touch is again running after sense pleasures. That's why you're running after that particular individual. Yeah, craving to taste something and then taste the same thing again and again and again. observe this yeah how i crave for particular sense pleasures and i keep craving i keep running behind that that's your homework number 2 which sense pleasure still dominates you it could be one it could be two it could be three it could be all five yeah sight smell taste touch and sound you check which of these five still dominates you yeah or how many of them still dominate you
you may go where you like. You will never taste supreme peace except through perfect quiescence. Quiescence means being absolutely silent, quiet, but not being quiet here. Being quiet here, he's talking to the mind and quietness of the mind means letting go of every little craving, every little desire, every little want or not want. Yeah? Just being absolutely silent. When the mind is absolutely silent, that is peace. Abandon all hopes and desires. For all these seemingly wondrous objects of the nature, either of being or of non-being, are not meant for your happiness. Yeah, directly he is saying this. All these sense objects are not going to be the source of happiness for you. And then he gives examples no, of the deer which gets trapped in the sound yeah so deer actually have the craving for sense of sound yeah and that's how they get trapped elephants have a craving for touch so the male elephant is trapped by you know a female with the help of a female elephant the fish runs after the sense of taste goes after food and therefore it gets got onto the fishing hook. The moth, it keeps fluttering near the light. Have you seen? Someday you just put on a candle, you'll see a moth flutter, flutter, flutter around it and then die. It, the same fire burns it. Sense of sight is its weakness. And the bee is sense of smell. It smells and it goes to the flower and the same flower can close on the bee. Yeah? And then the bee is destroyed. Yeah? So very beautiful examples he has given that each of these insects or animals have one sense that is the, their craving and that can lead to its death. But you, or oh mind, you have all five and you crave for all five. Yeah. What disaster awaits you? Yeah. So the sutra is beautiful. Oh foolish mind, all these perish being subject to just one sense craving. The deer, because of the sense of hearing. Bee, the sense of smell. Moth, sense of sight. Elephant, sense of touch. And fish, sense of taste. But you have all the five temptations. Yeah. How can you have happiness? How? Just as the silkworm spins its cocoon and gets caught in it, you have woven the web of your own concepts and are caught in it. If you can get rid of all that, attain purity, overcome even the fear of life and death and thus attain to total equanimity, you have achieved the greatest victory. So what is the greatest victory? Exam question. Yeah. If you can Overcome even the fear of life and death and attain total equanimity. Yeah. If you can get rid of all your concepts. Yeah, fear is a concept. Yeah, it's a making of your own mind. That is why one person is fearful of a little cockroach and the other person is not fearful of the cockroach. It's a concept in that particular person's mind. Yeah. You can so easily let go of these small little concepts, no? Oh, it's okay. It's just a cockroach. It's only a lizard. Yeah. Letting go of 
the fear of darkness. It's okay. It's not going to kill me. Just like that. Fear of death is also a concept in your head. It's actually the fear of the unknown. The mind does not like that insecurity of not knowing what is ahead, what lies further. Yeah? Mind likes to hold on to something and hold on to it hard. Yeah? The moment you say it's okay, it doesn't matter. I am ready to be with the unknown. Then see the fear of death drops. Yeah? And when you reach that state of complete abhaya, complete fearlessness, life tastes really delicious yeah? because you really start living that day when you overcome the fear of death yeah? that's the greatest victory if you cling to this ever-changing phenomena called the world you will surely perish in sorrow but then why am I instructing you, O oh mind? Yeah, you are becoming weak by the day. Yes. And wise people do not instruct that which is about to be abandoned. Yeah. This is so beautiful. Yeah. You weaken your mind by telling your mind that you are already becoming weak. What's the point of talking to you? You are just born out of ignorance. Whenever your mind comes up with, I am saying it is like this only. I am right. Yeah? You weaken your mind. Homework number three. Start working on yourself. You start weakening your own mind. And tell your mind, Oh mind, I am the egoless, infinite and homogeneous consciousness. I have nothing to do with you because you are the cause of the ego. Yes, it was the mind that said that first I, no? And that first I led to this entire samsara. Yeah? That mind is the cause of the ego. Yeah? Recognize this. And do not nurture it anymore. Weaken your mind. Yeah. Let's continue with page 186 now.
so beautiful this page is, no? It's about self-inquiry. Who am I? Yeah. His process of self-inquiry, he says, I have done. Yeah. And he is enumerating that process of self-inquiry to us. Let's revisit it. The infinite self cannot possibly be squeezed into the mind any more than an elephant can be squeezed into a wood apple fruit. Why is he saying this? Yeah, he's telling you that the self or the consciousness or your blissful body is much bigger than your mind body. So what is mind body? Is mind body different from the consciousness or the self? The answer is in the next sentence. He says, the consciousness that through this process of self-limitation is confined to finitude, means to concepts and percepts, then it is known as mind. So it is the same consciousness that gets lost in this external world of people, situations and things in all this prakriti. That consciousness lost in the prakriti is called the mind. The moment it withdraws from the prakriti and goes back towards the purusha, it is the consciousness or the self. So the same consciousness which is outside is called mana. The same consciousness when it goes back to itself, it is nama. Yeah? That is what is described here. This is the result of ignorance and hence I do not accept this. The ego sense is only a child's ignorant concept and it is believed in by one who does not investigate the truth. And how do you investigate the truth? By self-inquiry. And he says that he has carefully investigated and observed himself from the tips of his toes to the top of the head. Yeah? And he says, I have found nothing that I could say, this is I or you know, who am I? He's asking. He, could, he says that he could not find anything that he could say that this is I. Yeah? You think, where am I? Ask yourself, am I here? Am I here? Am I here? Am I here? I am here. Yeah. Where am I in this body? I am everywhere and still I am nowhere. Yeah. So you cannot point out one particular place. That's what he's saying. Who is this I? Where is it? It is not there only. I am the self-pervading consciousness which is itself not an object of knowledge. Means you cannot know it. You cannot know the consciousness. It's not an object of knowing. Yeah. It's free from selfhood. Yeah, you understand what he's trying to say here? That you cannot really understand it. You cannot know it. It does not say I. Yeah. That selfhood, this belongs to the ego. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with the consciousness. I am that which is indivisible, which has no name. Because the name belongs to this body, right? This body is called Ekta. When this body drops, yeah, the Consciousness still continues and probably takes on another body. And that body could be called Amitabhachan. Yeah, we do not know. Yes. So the name belongs to the body, not to the consciousness. The consciousness of Purusha is that energy that just moves on from one body to the next, to the next. Yeah. It is indivisible. And it has no name. 
does not undergo any change. Only the body dies. The Purusha moves on. It is beyond all concepts of unity and diversity. And it is beyond measure. Yeah? You cannot call it small or big. Yeah? You cannot call it one or many. Yeah? And other than that which not ends. Hence, O oh mind, I abandon you who are the source of sorrow. Yeah? So it is just this mind which is the source of sorrow. It is the mind that came up with that I, I, I. Yeah? And that has led to all this sorrow. So in the next paragraph, he just reiterates the point that in this body which is just flesh, bones and blood, who says this is I? Yeah. Motion is the nature of energy. Thinking is inherent in consciousness. Old age and death are natural to the body. Who says this I am? This is the tongue, these are the ears, nose, this is motion, these are eyes. Who says this I am? I am none of these, nor am I you, O oh mine, nor these concepts. I am but the infinite consciousness, pure and independent. I am all this, or there is no I, are both expressions of the same truth. Not else is truth. Yeah? I am all this. I am that consciousness which is here, which is there, which is there, which is there, which is everywhere. So I am all this. For oh, there is no I. Yeah? Both are the same. Yeah? This is similar to Ashtavakra, no? Either I am everything or I am nothing. We'll go ahead, yeah, read the rest of page 186 now. So very beautifully he is going on to describe in detail you know, what is memory, what is ego sense. Let's look at that. Alas, for so long I have been victimized by ignorance. But luckily I have discovered that which robbed me of self-knowledge. I shall never more be the victim of ignorance. 
even as the cloud sitting on top of a hill does not belong to the hill, though I seem to be associated with sorrow, I am independent of it. Yeah? I am not attached to anything or anybody. It is just this piece of prakriti that gets attached to another person or a thing or a situation outside. But I am not this piece of prakriti. I am not this body. I am not this mind. I am separate from it. Then how can I be attached to that external sorrow that is from a person or a situation or a thing? Yeah, That is what he is saying here. So just like a cloud sitting on a hill is not, does not belong to the hill, like that only. This sorrow is just like a cloud. Yeah, once these clouds move away, I recognize that I am not attached to that or connected to that or related to that sorrow. Yeah. In the absence of self-knowledge, there arose ego sense. So ego comes only when self-knowledge disappears. Yeah. The moment self-knowledge has gone from this door, ego sense comes in from the other door. But now I am free of ego sense, he says. Let the body, the senses and so on be or perish. I have nothing to do with them. The senses, the eyes exist in order to come into contact with their own objects for their own sake. Who is I that is deluded into thinking this is I or I see etc. These eyes etc. see or experience their objects naturally without being impelled to do so by previous conditioning. This is very important. The eye can see without any previous mental conditioning. It's got nothing to do with the previous memory of the past. Yeah, It will still see. Right now it is looking at the computer. You have been in so many Yoga Vashishta sessions before this. 40 plus Yoga Vashishta sessions before this. Sitting exactly at that same place looking exactly at the same computer. Yes, but still the eye sees fresh. Yeah, but the mind sees the past memory impression from a past memory of a Yoga Vashishta session. It is carrying on. You see the subtle difference in the conditioning? Yeah, the eye sees purely what is, but the mind changes that data that the eye has seen. It gets conditioned by its previous memory. Yeah. Same with what the ear, the ear hears. Same with what the tongue tastes. Yeah. You taste a chocolate pastry, you compare it to another chocolate pastry that you have eaten in the past. The tongue did a pure act of tasting and it said awesome. But the mind said no, that other one was better. You see, the mental conditioning is at the mind level, not at the pure sense level. Yeah? Did you think about it like that? Hence, if actions are performed spontaneously without mental conditioning, their experience will be pure and free from memories of past happiness or unhappiness. So learn from your senses only, he is saying here. How the tongue just tastes what is. How the eyes see everything fresh, what is right now in front of me. How the ear hears what is right now the sound that is coming to me right now yeah spontaneous in the present moment being with what is yeah 
Like that you do every action he is saying. Yeah? Devoid of past impressions. Devoid of past memory. Then your action becomes a pure action. Then you are actually just flowing with life without creating any agami karma. Hence, O oh senses, perform your functions without being hampered by memory. This memory or mental conditioning is not a fact in truth. It is non different from and not independent of the infinite consciousness. It can therefore be easily dispelled. You can get rid of this mental conditioning very easily. You have to just let go of that past impression that is sitting and bugging you in your head and creating that craving or aversion. Hence, O oh mind, abandon this perception of diversity and realize the unreality of your own independence from the infinite consciousness. That is liberation. Yeah? So, abandon this perception of diversity and realize the unreality of your own independence means the mind is not independent of the consciousness. The mind devoid of all these mental perceptions or past impressions. Mind minus these past impressions is the consciousness. It is not different from the infinite consciousness. The moment you realize that, that itself is liberation. So wake up to this. Liberation is not seeing some white light or blue light in meditation or start levitating above the ground. Yeah? Liberation is just realizing that this mind which is thinking that it is an entity of its own, it drops off. It drops this false identification. It recognizes that it is the Purusha or the consciousness. Just that recognition is liberation. So I leave you with this. Sit and contemplate this tonight. Drop all these past impressions. Drop your mental conditioning. Recognize you are that pure infinite consciousness. You are the pure Purusha. I'll not give you any homework. Just read these three pages again because they are quite heavy. Yeah? And I'll see you next week. Jai Gurudev.